This week on First Century Foundations, a search for the biblical blue gets me snorkeling for snails. Karen learns about Elijah's cloak in Haifa, and I witness an ancient chemistry practice brought back to life. And it all starts right now. Hey everybody, I'm Joe Amaral. And I'm Karen Amaral. Welcome to another edition of First Century Foundations. And this season, we're focusing on the culture of Jesus. And today we're asking what I think is a really cool question. What did Jesus wear? Do we have anything in the scriptures that focus in on an article of clothing that Jesus wore? Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna look at Matthew 9, verse 20. Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. I mean, that's one of those awesome passages of scripture. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand the backstory, you wonder why did she touch the edge of the mm -hmm. garment or, or the hem of the garment? Yeah. Why didn't she like come up to him and on the shoulders yeah. so he could see your face and know who it was. Yeah. And what was the edge of the garment? We think in 21st century terms of yeah. like, you know, this being your hem or on your pants yeah. or something. What was, what was the edge of his garment? Yeah, so that's why we're asking, what would Jesus wear? Yeah. And there's a command in the Torah where uh, this, this tassel that was on the edge of all the prayer shawls, which is what Jesus was wearing, it had to be dyed with a very specific color of blue. Mm. And that's been lost for almost 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. And recently they've kind of, they've refound uh, the snail where they get that dye from. And I'm super excited. We're gonna meet with the team who discovered the snail and this technique. So we're gonna go to door and get a demonstration on how they actually dyed that tassel. So we're gonna actually look at what Jesus wore. Really, really cool. Well, speaking of clothing, I'm going up to Haifa to visit Elijah's cloak. There they're giving out clothing to people in need and we're gonna find out more about them today. That is awesome. Sounds like we have a theme, clothing, yeah. both then and now. Guys, we have a great show, stay with us. The art of making the very specific blue color known as techelet for the temple and for priestly clothes has been lost for nearly 2,000 years, but today I'm meeting with Baruch Sturman who is at the forefront of bringing this lost art back to life. So maybe you can start by telling me actually wh where, where are we here Baruch? Sure, well we're here at uh, the ancient uh, city of Dor, Dora. Okay. So this was always a very important place. What was maybe the most important thing about this area, mm. it was the center for the ancient dye industry okay. with the, uh, the ancient Israelites, mm -hmm. the Phoenicians to the north, the Israelites in this area would, uh, would make the purple and the blue, the okay. purple argaman and the blue tchelet, Okay. which was the color of the most gorgeous Mediterranean sky I know, that you look see at that. here. Right. Wow. And the, the sea, the tchelet would remind you of the sea and it would remind you of the sky. Okay. This ancient tchelet one of the most important commodities in the ancient world, and especially to the ancient Jews, to the mm -hmm. Israelites, uh, it was in the temple. Okay, why was it so important to the ancient Jews? Is it because, was it a man-made thing that you had to use this color? Or is there a scriptural basis for having to use the dye on articles of clothing? Sure, the Tchelet is mentioned some 70, 75 times throughout the Bible. Oh really? Sure. Okay. It's, uh, it's first mentioned as an adornment of, within the temple, many of the curtains on the walls of the oh, temple were made okay. out of tchelet. The, um, the clothes of the high priest mm. were made predominantly of tchelet. But what made it so special mm. to each and every Jew was the commandment to affix one small string of tchelet to the corner of his hem, of his garment. Ah, right? okay. And that was known as the cord of blue, the patil tchelet, yes. that every Jew would, would try to wear for thousands of years, mm. since the time of Moses and all throughout the time of Jesus and a little bit after, yes. and then it disappeared. Gone what? Did the snails... No. What? Did they... Well, what? that was the question. Yeah. Uh, how, why did it disappear? Yeah. But for the last 1300 years, Tchelet was essentially lost, the mm. secret was lost, and nobody knew what it came from, what the, this marine source, the mysterious Chilazon, it's called in the Talmud. Okay what was the source and of course how, how it was processed and that's where, where uh, uh, 
our research has, has come in. Over the last, let's say, 100 years, there have been some ideas about what this snail could have been, how it could have been died, and maybe even just over the last 20, 30 years, we mm. believe that the, uh, the mystery has been solved. And we, of awesome. course, have been, uh, have been involved in actually renewing this biblical practice with uh, Jews once again, mm. after over a thousand years, wearing these threads of blue like they did in the biblical times. This isn't something you buy in, in some souvenir shop. This is, this is yours. This is my prayer shawl. Yeah, that's these awesome. These strings are of the first strings that we've ever dyed. These strings are probably about wow. 23, 25 years old. That's amazing. Right? Man. The white strings have been changed again and again, but the blue stays. One of the characteristics mm. of this biblical trelet was, as Maimonides says, it is steadfast in its beauty. Mm. It never fades, yeah. it never changes. And so here we are at 25 years. I guess these are just about the oldest strings uh, in, in modern times wow. dyed with trelet. And they're still beautiful as they as they were the day that they were that they were dyed. Man, now it's so, wow. what's interesting here, yeah. as you mentioned before, we decided uh, we we looked into how exactly that we should tie these, and it's sure. not an easy thing. There may be twenty five or thirty different ways okay. uh, that one can tie them. Mm -hmm. But even on top of that, we put a little bit of a personal twist to it. Okay, I don't know if you can really see it, but there's a little Let's spine. See. It goes around it, and this is ah, you know, yes. our family has this way of tying. And uh, so all the males uh, in your family, all the males have in our family like have a shawl like this. And, that is and, awesome. And they all tie uh, in this way. What's what we, we mentioned before is that I, I think that there is something to the fact that you tie them in a little bit of a personal way. Mm. Professor Milgram talks about the fact that in ancient times, uh, a person would take these knots that he had, the fringes, mm -hmm. on his hem, on the corner of his garment, yeah. he would press it into clay, Okay. and that seal would be his signature. He would affix oh, that when he wanted to okay. sign a document, when he wanted to verify that something was true, he would take his specific twisted knots and print it. Wow, and, and then to verify, right? they to would verify. line it up. Yeah, exactly, and, and no one, this, was, this was, you know, kind of a... Uh, a digital signature. That's kind incredible. Of, right? So so Jesus then, living in that time period, having a prayer shawl, being observant, following the commands of the Torah, wore his prayer shawl, had his tzitzit, and do you think it's possible to have the same kind of imprint on his tzitzit? Oh, absolutely. I'm sure that what uh, uh, I would believe, that he had his own kind of a, a, mm. a, of a way of tying it in a twist. And when somebody would come over, as it says in the, in, in the Bible, and touch the corner of his hem, mm. what they were saying is, we're touching you, we're trying to identify Ident with your wow. identity, we're, your truth is our truth. That's and even to this boy. day, there's yeah. a beautiful custom, when I go up to the Torah scroll, when anybody mm. goes up to the Torah scroll and reads it, we touch it with the hem, with the tzitzit, we kiss it, as if we're saying, we accept this, we're verifying mm. that we are, uh, that this is our truth as well, and we're signing it. In That's a amazing. Yeah, so this is a very, very beautiful, cool. beautiful idea yeah. about the personal relationship that one has with God. And of course, the way we wear it, this is, mm. this actually, if you talk about personal, this was embroidered by my wife, oh, which nice. she gave me when, uh, when we got married. Oh, wow. And our custom is to put on our prayer shawl first when we get married. When we're young and we're not married, we don't wear a prayer shawl. Not everybody, different uh, okay. customs, different okay. things, but we did. So you talk about the, uh, the really the personal connection. Yeah. And the way we wear it, when we wake, uh, when mm. we wake up in the morning and we, okay. uh, and we begin to pray, we take it, we make the blessing, wrap ourselves with the talit completely so that mm. God's, God's uh, spiritual uh, relationship with us completely embodies us yes. and encompasses us. And then we wear it and begin to pray as, wow. uh, as that. Very cool. Right. And, and all this is possible, these shawls, because of these what? Right. Little tiny animals. Yes. That we can find. Would you like to see so if we can go find some? You know what? I would love to see that. And I think our viewers would love to see that too. Okay, great. So Let's I'm going to follow your lead. I, I've never done anything like this before. I, I'm very Canadian. We don't, <laughs> we don't have this kind of stuff this where I live. Stuff, so right. I'm going to follow your lead. That would be very cool. Sure. Okay, so this way? Right to the, right oh, to the sea. All right. Uh, so we're down by the water, yep. and what are we looking for? Because okay. I have no idea. Well, this is the snail that we're looking for. Okay. But it's going to be a little bit tricky. 
because okay. the Bible calls these the treasures that are hidden in the sand. Ooh. And they really are they really hidden are. in the sand. Okay. You're going to find that sometimes they have a coating that looks, they'll look exactly like rocks. Okay. And uh, uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky to find them. This is, of course, one that's been uh, dead for a while, but we're going to be looking for the live ones with the actual worm, the snail inside. That's oh. what we need. Right? Okay. We don't need the shell, we need the worm. So if we see one, what do we do? Do you Just wave? pick it up. Just pick it up. We'll pick it up, we'll take it out, and then uh, we'll collect them. All right, well, happy hunting. Here All we right. go. Snorkeling with Baruch was a lot of fun, but finding these little snails was a lot harder than I thought. I couldn't believe how well these things blended in with the bottom. I have no idea how Baruch was able to spot them, but before long he had some. Found a bunch of them. Now these are alive? Oh yeah, sure. How can we show that they're alive? Well, first of all, when they're alive, uh, you can tell the inside they have this kind of a, ah. of a little brown thing. This is like a fingernail, their foot that closes uh, and oh. seals them in. So oh, that even okay. if you uh, were to catch them, if you were trying to eat them, if you were you know, a fish mm. that was trying to eat them, they can really seal themselves in. When you put them down on the ground, they'll slowly come out of their shell and start kind of really? walking around. Yeah, you know, they'll have this inside in the spiral of the shell is the worm. That, wow. That's the uh, the mollusk, the snail, and they build this uh, ornate uh, house mm. uh, around them to keep uh, to keep them protected. Uh, but if they weren't alive, uh, they'd be empty. This would be empty. Okay. Well, let's go get changed, and when we come back, we'll learn how to how to dive. Yeah, sure. Coming up, Karen learns more about the clothing ministry of Elijah's cloak in Haifa, and later Baruch shows me how to make this ancient blue color from the snails that we just found. For 2,000 years, man has been studying the life and words of Jesus. But in our modern culture, can we truly understand what he really meant? Now we can. Joe Amaral's book, Understanding Jesus, removes the veil of history and brings us greater understanding of the time and culture that Jesus and the authors of the Bible lived in. In Understanding Jesus, we study the feasts of the Lord as Jesus celebrated them and find valuable insight into God's prophetic timetable throughout history. Knowing more about this ancient culture will give you accurate insight into the teachings of Jesus and will take your faith to a whole new level. And this life-changing book can be yours for just $20. Call today and order your copy of Understanding Jesus by Joe Amaral, 1-877-628-2800, or visit us online at www.firstcenturyfoundations.com. Today in Israel, there are many needs, food and clothing among them. And today we get to visit with Vladimir, who is in charge of Elijah's cloak. He is giving out clothing and distributing it among people in great need in Israel. Let's hear from him. It was about like 15 years ago when one of the members of our congregation decided to do something uh, kind of like a social for the members of the congregation. So we all brought clothes together and we conducted what we called back then clothing exchange. So everybody brought something from their own and everybody were exchanging it with each other. And later out of that, it actually grew into an outreach when we started inviting people from the street, needy people to come and to receive clothing. And so we realized that there is a great need in a city of Haifa in the country of Israel uh, of people who are in need of clothing. So we decided to open a center center where we will be sharing this clothing with those who are in need. It grew now to, to the point where we are sharing uh, clothing with uh, about 300 people every month. And, and so people are coming to us, we're sharing with them clothing, and most importantly, we want them to come and to see that we we're care about them. And as we care about them, that really opens their heart to hear about uh, what we believe in. We're now located in a neighborhood which is mixed uh, between Jews and Arabs, and this is also one of the part, uh, parts of uh, the ministry and the vision for this ministry that we're sharing the love of God with both Jews and Arabs. So when people come to us, uh, they come Jews and Arabs in one place. Sometimes you could see Muslims and, and secular Jews uh, come and stand there uh, picking up the clothing, and, and it's just amazing to see how God 
is using that small effort that we have to reach out to the people in our city. In terms of the need of this ministry, I think uh, definitely, and first of all, in a sense, we, we want to be uh, full of the Spirit in order to share the love of God with the people. So we're always praying that God would give us a heart for the people, because uh, when you're coming and ministering in an area like that, day by day, there is a potential danger to turn it into a routine. So you come like us to a work, and you do your work, you leave, and you kind of like forget about that. So this is what we don't want. So we really appreciate any prayer for us that, that the burden and the fire of God will not be quenched in our hearts. So we'll be able to share it with the people because uh, we had many occasions when people came to, to look for clothing but found Yeshua. And then in some cases, people are coming to us not even for the clothing anymore. They're coming and they're saying, we want to come here because we feel differently. We sense that there is something special about the place, about the people who are working here, people who are coming and, and helping us, uh, bringing us tea. And then so that kind of like support of prayer, I think that's the most vital. And we do need clothing, which uh, is uh, somewhat uh, difficult to send uh, overseas. And there are some procedure uh, difficulties, but, uh, but whatever way is possible, we, we would appreciate. And if that would be prayer, I think that would be most appreciated. It was wonderful to hear what God is doing through this ministry here in Haifa. And if you would like to help or if you would like to get involved, visit our website, call our toll-free number, uh, find out how you can receive the Israel Prayer Watch and learn more about the praise reports and the prayer requests that are in this land. Many, many ministries need your help and we would love to hear from you today. To make a donation or learn more about this ministry and the Israel Prayer Watch, visit us online at www.firstcenturyfoundations.com or call 1-877-628-2800. After snorkeling in the Mediterranean for a while, we brought our snails to shore so Baruch has shown me how the biblical blue Tehelet is made from these tiny creatures. So what we're going to mm. do, these are the snails that we caught. Yes. We're going to break one. Very manly, we caught these snails. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to break one of these open and take out the gland that uh, stores the dye. Okay. That's a hard little shell. Yeah. That's a great defense mechanism uh -huh. against big uh -huh. fish. Ooh, yuck. Yeah. There it is. Now, there's yeah. the snail, and along the back here is where the uh, the gland is. And all of that yellow yeah. is what's going to become the dye. My goodness, how do they know in antiquity uh, to that pick the snail? Probably the earliest dyeing that we know of is mm. on the island of Crete. Oh. The Minoan civilization from about 1750 BC. Oh my goodness! Uh, yeah. So this was a very, very ancient, uh, ancient uh, technique, and we'll just leave this here. Sure. These little pieces, which uh, which are going to happen. What we do mm. is we'll break open thousands and thousands of snails, extract the uh, the glands from them, mm -hmm. put them out to dry, then take the dried snail uh, uh, cake, if you will. Okay. Put it in a coffee grinder. We get this kind of powdered dye. There's all kinds of things in here, little so bits of... So is that kind of like the dried version of those glands? Exactly. Oh, okay. But there's all kinds of... So you know, you get the smell, the lovely smell of the... Uh, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, you'll, you'll feel it. You'll, <laughs> okay. Don't worry, it'll come to you. Oh, um, there it is, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and mm. what we're going to try to do now is to go through this process chemically mm. of, first of all, kind of purifying just to get the dye out of it. Okay. And, uh, and then some little tricks that we're going to have to find out. It was amazing to see all the steps the ancients would have taken to create this special blue dye. And they would have had to realize that they needed one special ingredient in particular, the sun. Both of these come from these Murex trunculus snails. The only difference is this was not put into the sun and this was put into the sun exactly in this stage as we are now. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Huh. We are going to dye now with the wool. We're going to put the wool in here. Okay. When it's in this state. And um, let's just do that. Okay, adding a little bit of the wool. Yeah. We'll let it go in. As we're waiting just for a few seconds until the blue comes out, I mean, this blue 
is a metaphor for so many things. Mm. This is the blue that's in the flag of the state of Israel. Yeah. The snails are off the coast of, of, of Israel. And so this whole commandment is so, uh, so bound up mm. with, with Israel and coming back to Israel. The Jews coming back to Israel, that's when this whole thing was found, mm. the rediscovery of, uh, of this commandment is all okay. happening here. And, uh, and the idea of, um, of the rebirth of the state of Israel, mm. the rebirth of the kingdom of Israel, if you will, of God's kingdom in this, yeah. in this world is all bound up with the sky and the sea and the land. Very cool. And, uh, and, uh, and so hopefully that's what we'll, uh, what we'll, be, uh, we'll be seeing here. Okay, well, let's see what happens. Okay. We'll take this out. Now, no tricks. No tricks. Right, no one continuous shot. <laughs> And what we're going to do now is we're just going to see in the air, hopefully we'll see, that this um, starts to turn its colors. Maybe it can go. Oh can my goodness, look at that. It's going blue almost instantly. Uh -huh. And all it is is uh, exposing it to air. But all of this technology would have had to have been discovered by the ancients in ancient time. You can imagine that as soon as it was lost, uh, it was forgotten forever. This is, beautiful. this is exactly the color of the sky. Yeah, yeah. You can play with the depth. You can make it a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, depending on whether you want the evening sky, the sky in the middle yeah, of the day. Yeah, pr pretty good match. But yeah. Not too bad. And your shirt. And my shirt. <laughs> hey, maybe the shirt is made of the dye. Yeah. If it was uh, worth, I don't know, did you pay like uh, 20 times its weight in gold? No, I got it on sale. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's what this was worth in the ancient times. 20 really? times its weight in gold. Wow. Well, I, I know for me that this has been just mind-blowing uh, as a person, as, as a Christian who, who loves the Hebraic roots and, and reading in the Old Testament about, about the priestly garments and, and all the stories in the New Testament that have to do with prayer shawls and always wondering about this, this elusive blue because even today it's really difficult to find prayer shawls that have blue. I have a fake one and even that's hard to find with fake blue but the real stuff. Yes. This is amazing. Baruch, thank, thanks so much, man, for showing it to us. I really, really My appreciate pleasure. it. My pleasure. Awesome. God's Holy Days, the new DVD teaching series by Joe Amaral. Filmed in a conference speaking environment, infused with rich visuals such as photos and realistic video reenactments, this series will take you on an exciting journey of discovery in God's Holy Days. You'll learn the meaning behind many symbolic parallels that have long been forgotten by the church. Find out why most Western believers have little knowledge of these feasts and how much there is to gain once we understand them. This three and a half hour teaching series will show you how Jesus is both concealed and revealed in the feast of the Lord from Passover through Tabernacles. You'll be amazed as Joe describes in detail how these feasts can still powerfully apply to all believers everywhere. Included with the purchase of this DVD is a seven-week study guide to help you personally apply these many truths. To order your copy, call right now, 1-877-628-2800. You know, just when I, I think that my job can't get any cooler, it does. Mm -hmm. Today, I got to go snorkeling in the Mediterranean with, with Baruch, who was a super nice guy. And we went on the hunt, you know, for these Murak snails. I was amazed at how quickly he was able to find so many. I was shocked that he found them, because to me, they all look the same. They look like rocks. And yeah. uh, you can see with the underwater footage, he's pointing. I'm like, what, rocks? He's like, no, no, those are the snails. Yeah. And, and just to know that those were the snails used in antiquity mm. where they would extract the, the dye that they would use to put in the uh, tzitzit, which are the tassels of a prayer shawl, which, by the way, in the book of Numbers, chapter 15, there is a command there from God mm. that every Jewish male, which would include Jesus, okay, who was a Jewish male, that they would have to wear a tallit. Right. But more than just a tallit, they would have to put tassels on the corners of their garments and a blue streak in every one. And mm. that was the key. And after the destruction of the temple, they lost the snail. They weren't able to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And now it's been restored. And it was just, it, it was so awesome 
to be able to watch the presentation. Oh, I know you yeah. really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, I did. It was so interesting watching that turn from what you thought was just this yellow guck, guck of <laughs> yeah. water. Yeah. Guck and is the technical term <laughs> for what that stuff was. And yeah. when it oxidized and yeah. it was exposed, it, it all started to turn blue. It was so amazing. It, it, it was so cool, you know, and it takes us back to that story. Yeah. Did that woman know something mm -hmm. that we didn't know before? Mm -hmm. You know, when you understand the Hebraic roots, that the story behind the story, it makes sense. Because in Malachi chapter 4, verse 2, it says that the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in His wings. Yes, yeah. And the Hebrew says kanaf, which is the same word the Mal in Malachi, same word we see in the book of Numbers. Mm. So the wings over time came to be common knowledge to people that they were the tassels on the garments. And so every man's tassels were called the wings of his garment and there was a blue streak in them. Mm. And so this woman who grew up in synagogue and she heard all the messianic prophecies heard that one day yeah. when the sun of righteousness rises, yeah. there'll be healing in the wings in the tzitzit of his yeah. garment. She reached right for those tassels. She, she wasn't just pressing yeah. through the crowd. She and wasn't reaching to touch just anything. Exactly. She was aiming for that. She had purpose. Yeah. And it's just awesome to be able to know that background. And it's such a privilege to be able to learn this kind of stuff mm -hmm. and then do it here in the land and share it with our viewers. It was really cool to learn about how uh, people were using ancient clothing, mm -hmm. but you had a chance to meet up with the ministry to find out about how, uh, what people are doing mm -hmm. with modern clothing yeah. in the land. Well, in Haifa, they're really reaching out in the community. They're really impacting uh, for the greater good and helping people who maybe necessarily can't afford um, to clothe themselves or yeah. their families. They are an awesome ministry oh, up yes. there. Yes, they are reaching so many people up there and it's amazing to see what God is doing. And if you would like to yeah. get involved in helping out with them and reaching out to their community as well, you can get in touch with us by calling our office, by visiting our website. Mm -hmm. We're both on Facebook and Twitter and you can learn more about our ministry yeah. that way. But get in touch with us. We have the Israel Prayer Watch uh, that comes every two months and you can find out what God is doing in here. You can learn about the praise reports, what God's doing. And you can also learn about their prayer requests and yeah. what their needs are and find out more about how you can get involved with that. Yeah, and so praying for the ministries, giving to the ministries, following us on Facebook and Twitter, all that stuff is really cool. But for me, one of the coolest things I get to do mm -hmm. is to be able to bring believers from mm -hmm. all around the world right here to the land. And yeah. today, you know, we're standing in Tiberias. Uh, the Sea of Galilee is just over here. Capernaum, just over there. Uh, Bethsaida, just over there. Nazareth, just over there. Do you get the picture? This is the land of the Bible. And we get to bring hundreds mm -hmm. of people every year on a tour to Israel. And we'd love for you to join us on a tour. And when you come, I guarantee it'll affect the way you read your Bible. Mm -hmm. And as we continue, guys, to study the Jewish foundations of Christianity, we get to better understand Jesus. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Shalom. In Israel today, there are many needs. Food clothing just happened to be one of them. And today we're gonna, nope. Today we're gonna get to visit with Vladimir and learn about the food, nope. In Israel today, there are many needs. Fooding and, fooding. <laughs> okay, take 86. <laughs>